All right, y'all, here we go. It's a little bit of shop time. We got another project on the go. Something I've never done before. So it works out. I am about to embark on a project that I've never done before. I've seen them. I think they're pretty cool. I've never made one. We're going to make a shadow box. So Austin's got himself a drum skin from a concert he went to. And we didn't have any drumsticks. Now I could have went to the store and bought some. But I thought, let's try and make some. My lathe is 13 inches. The drumsticks are 17. Turned into a bit of a shit show. But we got the drumsticks made. So if you haven't seen that video, it's linked down below. Have a look. It turned out pretty good. So we've got a drum skin, drumsticks, and a small poster of the concert. You gotta put them in a shadow box. So when I cut this board, I want the top of the shadow box to be higher than the bottom. So I'm gonna measure this out at three inches up here. Measure it out at inch and a half down here. I'm gonna draw my straight line from here to here, and that'll give me an angle. Hopefully. That works out the way I want it to work out. Alright, I want the sides to be as close as possible, and they're not. So we're going to put them on the belt sander here, try and get it as equal as we can. Alright, so if we go inch and a half off the bottom, that starts the drum skin up to another 18 inches right here, and that's the top of the drum skin. Another two inches within that two inches is going to give us our drum sticks. And I believe the poster is nine inches, so we're going to have a little bit of room to play here, theoretically. Once that's done, I got to go to the table saw, notch out the bottom a quarter inch. All the way along for the backing board. First time, folks. First time. Hopefully it works out. All right, well, we are back, but we got ourselves a bit of a problem. While I like the initial layout and the design with the taper, I just don't think it's going to work. Though this is glued and nailed, I don't think it's going to be very strong to hang on a wall. I'm not happy with the wood itself. So what did I do? Oh, I got some more wood. We're going to start over. We're going to scrap that. Sort of the same basic design, but there's not going to be any taper. I want it to be just a box. All that work? Gone. Just like that. And Christmas is a week away. I got to get this done today. Because I've got another project that's got to be done by Christmas as well. So... We ain't gonna get her done by me sitting there running my mouth, so let's get to it. We got our four pieces cut. We got our two sides, our top and our bottom. Now, if you look on this one here, what I did was I cut out the edge to allow the backer board to sit in there. I'm gonna change it up a little bit today. What I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna do this here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the table saw up to make one rip at three quarters of an inch in. Once I get all the boards to run through, I'm gonna move the table saw over to make another rip until it's wide enough that this backer board here fits in that groove. And I believe I'm only gonna go, I'm only gonna go maybe a quarter of an inch deep. Maybe, maybe three eighths. I've got the depth set at a quarter of an inch and the width we're gonna be going is three quarters of an inch. We'll get the groove cut in all these, make sure everything fits, and we start the gluing process. Again. All right, I think you can all see where I'm going with this. I got one pass through here. I'm going to put one more pass right up against this groove here. And that should be wide enough to get that board in there. And also, you're not going to see the cut. On the other one I did, you would have seen the cut and... 
Just wasn't happy with that piece, guys. That's why I'm doing it again. All right, we got our second groove cut. You can see it fits on there. What I almost forgot, though, is that the piece, is that the backer board that's going in there is going to be wrapped in a black felt. So I'm going to make one more pass just to open it up just a little bit so I don't have anything binding up when I go to put it in. And uh, we should be good to go. So as you can see, this is what we got. We got that groove all the way around. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some wood glue down here and over here. I'm going to nail it together and I'm going to let that set up. While that's setting up, I'm going to go in the house and I'm going to put the felt on top of the backer board. I'm not going to screw this or I'm not going to nail this on just yet because I still got to put the backer board in there. Hopefully it's going to be big enough because I don't think it's as wide as the other one I just made, but we'll see what happens. I'm just kind of... Flying by the seat of our pants here, kind of like we usually do. What to say? Are they gonna work or it ain't? Put that end cap on. Got to get it wedged in the bottom here. Here we go. So that's in there. That's in there. That fits good. Now, last piece. Let's see what happens. My God, I think it's going to work. Y'all like watching me struggle with this? Real life struggles. got to be trimmed down just a little bit here because it's not quite fitting properly what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this glued up with an end cap let that set up and I'm going to slide the backer board in with the material on it then I'm going to put the cap on the end hopefully it fits I am running out of time all right widened up the groove here a little bit got everything fitted uh the backer piece is still a tick too wide so we're going to address that once we get this painted and half of it nailed together. We're going to throw a little bit of paint on here and see what happens. That'll work. Let's head over to the paint booth. Here's what we got. So that took covered pretty good. That's only one coat. I think that might be all that needs. Now that's going to be the inside. And as soon as that dries... I'm just gonna flip it over and do the other side. Once it's all dry, we'll start the assembly. I think it's coming along pretty good. And you want to make sure that you paint with sawdust all over your bench. It may or may not add a little bit of texture. You big dummy. All right, well here we are. We're just about to start the assembly. I'm gonna glue the ends up down to this end here and nail them on. Yes, complete with dust specs. Don't panic, guys. It's not in the paint. It's just sitting on the paint. Get this glued up and nailed on. Let it sit for a bit. Then we're going to fit the backer board. Fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. Alright, so it slides in good all the way around here. But I've got, I can see it here, I've got a bit of a bulge right here. I might have to trim that down just a little bit. Alright, so after a little playing around, this piece here was just not pulled over far enough. So other than that, we got a good fit all the way around. It is time to spray the glue on the backer board to get the material to stick to it. Now I did wipe the bench down guys, I got rid of the dust, okay, well, as much as I could. You know, I tried to get this sprayed in the house and she told me to get out. So now I'm back out here in the shop spraying it out here. So we're going to soak this down with some glue. I got, uh, what do I got? I got Elmer's spray adhesive. Works on pretty much everything according to the directions. Not that I read, I don't read directions. But we're going to spray this on. We're going to soak the board down. I'm going to put the uh, material on here. Get it all spread out. Get it tight. 
as best I can. And once that dries, I'm going to then flip it over and tack it on the back side so that it doesn't come off. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can do this without screwing it up. We got to shake it. Shake can well. I'm supposed to shake can bad. Alright, let's go. There's what we are. Okay. Now. I am expecting some wrinkles, okay? I am. I'm going to get out the best I can. Even though most of this black is going to be covered, I still don't want it to look terrible. That's all. Okay, not bad, not bad. I don't know if you guys can see this. Obviously I can, you can see these little lines in here where it has some creases in it. I'm finding if you just run your finger over the crease, it goes away. So I got it stretched over here, pretty nice and tight. That is a white sticker on the backer board. I looked at that and I thought, should I throw a coat of paint over that? Nah. Well, you can see that white sticker. Alright, me being the impatient guy that I am, we've got the backer all glued up. Now, fortunately, it's pretty thin, so we should be okay there. Got that in there. Alright, All right, here's where we're at. Not too bad. Not too bad. I see a little bit of daylight in there. That's not good. Oh, no, I think it turned out pretty good. These creases here, they'll come over. We're going to vacuum this all out, clean it all up. And I have to put the pieces in here, but I also have to get a piece of glass cut to fit the top. All right, now we're down to doing some of the detail work. I've got the, the drumsticks out here. i got to figure out a way to attach them to the backer. So what I've got here... I've got four, looks like uh, three inch and a half inch copper pipe clamps. Now the debate is do I polish them to a nice shiny copper, which I think would look pretty cool, or do I polish them and then paint them black? It's a whole lot of black. But these fit just nicely over top of the drumstick, and then that will hold it to the back. Now for the drum skin, I'm going to take the other pipe clamps, cut them in half after I polish them, and I'm going to bend them down so that they fit on the lip of the drum skin, and screw it to the backer board and that'll hold that in place let's see how these shine up not too bad it's coming so we got them looking better than what they were and guys it wouldn't wasn't using a wire wheel copper soft i'm sure you all knew that just used a buffing wheel and I got some uh, throttle body cleaner. Maybe that'll clean it up, hopefully. Or it'll tarnish it and I gotta do it again. Yeah, that's not too bad at all. That came out pretty good. 
get the rest of these polished up and we'll see how they look. So these are the screws I'm going to use to hold the copper clamps down. That's why I don't throw anything away. All these screw, little screws and stuff like that I keep in a bin. They're a little small. I'm going to burn my fingers on the wheel. So here's how I'm going to do it. Just like that. And we're going to just do them all at once. You can see the difference. These two are done, these two are not. All right, here's where we're at so far. These are the copper clamps. These ones are the ones I cut in half. So you see I got one, two, three, and four. That's gonna hold the drum skin in place. I was obviously gonna hold the sticks. Last, I gotta figure out how to mount this to the backer board because I really don't want to ruin this by gluing it down. So it may go two-sided tape. We'll see. You want to help? Do you want to help? No? What about you? You want to help? And then the last thing is I got to get a piece of glass to cover the top. And it's done. We are back. Now we went and got the Lexan. Or plexiglass. Maybe it's plexiglass. What does it say? Acrylic sheet. We're, we're close on all counts. You all right there? I got a two foot by four foot piece. Regular price was, I think it was $128. I got it on sale for $22. It was in the discount section because apparently it's got a mark on one of the corners. One of the corners is chipped. I only need part of it. So we're good there. What I've done is I've got everything clamped down. Right next to her Christmas decorations. We all know how that's going to work out. So this is clamped down tight. I got everything marked off to match the box. They say the easiest way to cut this is with a knife. So we're going to give it a shot. They told me you could use a table saw, but my blade's not very sharp. And I can just picture glass shards going everywhere. So we're going to try the knife and see how that works. So the pro at Home Depot told me that you just take the knife and continually score it where you want it. And then it will just break off. You're about to find out, just like I am. And I am using a brand new knife. All right, well that worked. Going over it and over it again, scoring it. Uh, kind of boogered it up a little bit right here. But all in all, it worked out pretty good. Take a little bit of sandpaper, clean up that edge a little bit, and be good to go. Now, I gotta cut the long edge. May or may not be able to see my Sharpie line there. So we're gonna cut that there. And we should be good to go. All right, we got her cut. I'm going to pull the protective cover off. Who would have known the most challenging part would have been pulling the plastic off the acrylic. I got the acrylic cut, not a problem. The trick I thought was going to be drilling holes in it. Did a couple of practice holes, shattered it. I'm like, what am I gonna do now? All I gotta do is slow down, and I went through, not a problem. So now, time for final assembly. This is it. I think it turned out pretty good. 
Well, that's a first for me. I learned a couple things, and maybe you learned something too. Anyway, that's all I got for this project. Time to go start another one. See you on the next one. And remember, get outside and enjoy the outdoors. Later. Pretty close to the trip to the hospital, as was uh, that one over there.